subscribe, support, stay positive. Hey folks, it's Nick Crystal. Uh, so I'm at Ingalls parking lot in Black Mountain. And uh, waiting for my friend to come and join me. <laughs> and what is this? So what are we reviewing today? We watched Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, starring Steve Martin and John Candy. Yes, iconic actors, and also to another iconic actor, we uh, we bid, we give tribute to him as a scholar and a gentleman, and as a man that filled us with all his talent, talent <laughs> and passion. Maybe few more. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yes. I was a big fan. So rest in peace, my man. Rest in peace, man. But, uh, so Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, made in 1987, as the year I was born, huh. um, was, it's comedy, and it's pretty, okay, um, <laughs> I think Tommy likes it more than I do. I've seen it four or five times. Uh, it's, it's just, I mean, it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. Um, uh, so at the beginning, towards the beginning, basically, the whole premise is that Steve Martin is trying to leave, um, uh, New York. In, yeah, he's in New York City, and he's in marketing, and he's basically, like, at this co big important conference, I guess, and, uh, he is trying to catch a 6 o'clock plane to go to Chicago to spend Thanksgiving with his family, and everything just goes horribly awry. And in the process, um, and actually the person who causes it to go awry <laughs> is uh, John Candy's character, Del just, Griffin. Just to mention, in the process, in this movie, what the funny thing is, is as we are, as, as, we're, as we're learning as, as the jackass of the boss, you know, is waiting to look at the prince and then says, oh, basically, we'll have to wait after the holidays to re-get back together and figure out which prints are better, we see a young Kevin Bacon <laughs> trying to hail a cab also as... Steve Martin. Steve yeah. Martin is hailing a cab. It's like, bam! Kevin Bacon, and then he's gone. Like, that's it. Oh, nothing. No, no quote no, no... It's like a 30-second cameo. 30-second <laughs> cameo, and then, like, there's a, there's a shot of, like, zooming in on Kevin Bacon's Kevin face. Kevin Bacon's like, I was in Footloops, bitch. I've got time for this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> he looked a, little, he looked a little older to be from, like, if he, if he had been Footloose, because Footloose, he was a practically a teenager. Well, when he was supposed to be a teenager, he probably wasn't. Usually, you know how it is, that kind of thing. Like, oh, I'm supposed to be 18 and really I'm 24. But yeah, so anyway, um, he, John Candy's character, his name is Del. Del Griffin. Uh, grabs, um, Oh, what's Steve Martin's character's name? Sure, I, for, I, I'm just gonna say Steve and John. I'm just gonna say Steve and John. So I can, but uh, so Steve's trying to get this cab, and John takes it from him without realizing it, um, and it kind of screws Steve up completely. But then, at, when he finally does make it to the airport, they're waiting, and there's John. John Candy sitting there, and he's like, oh, you're the guy that, you stole my cab, you know, whatever. Well, and they end up kind of getting stuck together. So they're on the same plane, and they're riding next to, the seats are next to each other, like one coincidence he tries after to get another. Well, actually, he tries to get first class, and then the airlines, being the cheap airlines that they are, bump him, and he had booked the flight ahead of time to be in first class, mm -hmm. and then they're just like, well, you know what? Blah blah blah. This. And then that's how he ends up sitting next to to, to Dell again. Yeah. But anyway, but the the first thing that happens when they are stuck in the they actually end up getting a, a room together, a, ho a hotel room or motel room, um, because they their plane doesn't go to Chicago and they have it's snowing and they have to um, stop in Milwaukee or wherever it was. They I forget where they were actually. Because the thing is, Milwaukee. Uh, one thing it, it wasn't Milwaukee, but. Halfway across the United States, and it the was thing was. 
But the thing is, it's halfway across the United States, and they come from Chick- they come from New York, and and then I'm thinking they could have fly, they could have flown into some other state, honestly, and had a separate flight that could have waited until. Yeah, all those, all the, the ways that that the airlines work that way are kind of confusing. And... <laughs> what? So when they get this room together, there's one bed, one what? bed they have to share. <laughs> And I swear to God, I would not have slept in the same bed with this complete stranger I just met. Like, I would have slept on the floor. I don't know why Steve Martin's character didn't sleep on the floor. Because not only does he not know the guy, but he apparently, Dell apparently spills beer on the bed at some point. Because the, vi- the bread is... Uh, the yeah, he leaves the cans of beers on a vibrating bed, one of those vibrating beds, and it explodes. So then the Steve Martin side of the bed is all wet, and he sleeps there anyway. I'm like, sleep on the floor. Man, why would you want to sleep in beer? Honestly, well, some people would like to sleep in beer because they could reflect and uh, drink and just keep on drinking until they are asleep, passed out. Yeah, I mean, you know, but yeah, so then there's other part where um, they get a ride from this guy who's like super backwards redneck and he's like, Yeah, you can ride my. And of course, Crystal, she could spit chewing tobacco just fine. And he, he, at one point, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, this guy is like dribbles down his mouth, and he's all like, Bleh. and I'm like, holy crap, like I can, I can spit better than. <laughs> yes. But um, anyway, apparently, as they're riding in the back of this guy's pickup truck, um, there's loose hay in the pickup truck that is for some reason not blowing around everywhere as they drive. Yeah. And there's a freaking dog, apparently, that is hiding underneath all of this hay. And all this time, you don't hear from him or see him. He doesn't move an inch until, like, Steve Martin bends down to pick something up, a pair of gloves. And then all of a sudden, the dog, like, just... (laughs) And you're like, oh, yeah, okay. That makes a lot of sense. And then halfway during the ride, they get to their destination. And then, of course, they're in the back. And Steve Martin and Dale Griffin, John Kennedy's character, are just like, uh, and then you see the dog, the dog is just like, uh. Well, then the high, this, um, later, later on in the movie again, there's another scene where Steve Martin gets, um, pulled up by his balls by this guy who's pissed at him. <laughs> because Steve Martin is like so, at some, po- some point, he's like so hopelessly like just so upset and he's probably just I can't even imagine how infuriated he must be but everything keeps going wrong and he cannot get home and so he like mouths off to the wrong guy I guess he gets punched and Jack then in the face. he falls into the middle of the street and he almost gets hit by a car but the car gets you know, slammed on the brakes and ends up being none other than John Candy again and uh, so he's like you know basically John Candy's like tells the guy why don't you help him up you know like there's he's injured or whatever and he's like fine and then he like bends down and like grabs his nuts just grabs him and then so for the next the following scene Steve Martin keeps talking in this high pitched voice I you wouldn't know how much I appreciate you know I can't and do and it's funny I do think it's funny but I also thought it was kind of silly you know like it was like he had, like, permanent helium voice for, like, not permanent, but, like, semi-permanent. I don't know. It was, it was funny, but it was like, yeah, yeah. It's basically like, it's like Steve Martin basically took a balloon and sucked the whole balloon down. And then for that m- amount of seconds, because honestly, after you get nailed in the balls, you know, if you get grabbed, picked up by the balls, I, I don't think you, I don't think that really happens that you have no, well, no it doesn't happen <laughs> no it doesn't you know, I mean just... it might happen for a second like right after it happens you might be like oh my god you know or something for a moment but it's not gonna like stick around for like an hour um so yeah so this is what I really I really didn't like this scene because um I just thought it was really silly it's really silly <laughs> in a way that it wasn't really good silly um but when John Candy's hands get stuck in his jacket in the car. Oh, yes. John Candy is driving. And so he 
I think finally Steve Martin's character falls asleep and he's driving and he's playing, you know, do the mess around. Yeah, he's Everybody singing. do the mess around. Do, 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 Ray do, Charles. Do, 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 do. Yes. Yeah, Ray Charles messing around in that. And so as the song ends, he goes, he throws a cigarette. And here's the thing. The cigarette throw goes in the back. And Crystal said this to me. Well, not even the cigarette habit thing I thought later. I mean, like when he's driving and he wants he decides he wants to take his jacket off because it's hot in the car. Well, he throws his hand back and he gets it, like, you know, because he's trying to steer it and he's doing this number, like, you know. And he gets um, this loop that's on the end of his sleeves caught on something in the on the side of the seat. And then his hand's stuck. And right then, like, you know, just... Like, I don't know, just, yeah, I mean, pull your arm out of the jacket because now it's hung on something, so you could easily just wiggle your arm out. No, so instead, he does something else, which is just S, which is probably just work just as well, which is try to get his other arm out of the sleeve instead. So, well, actually, no, it wouldn't work as well because he doesn't have an ability to steer at this point. I forgot that. So, yeah. So, here's... And then he hooks his other arm on some other bullshit on the other side of the seat. Yeah. So here he is like this, and instead of just like wiggling his arms out of the sleeves, he's trying to, or, or for at least just put on the brake. Just slowly ease on the brake, there was nobody on the road, fix your situation, and then continue driving. No, he's like, he just decides he's going to drive like this, and it almost kills them. It's ridiculous. And then it gets even more ridiculous because during... Before that, yeah, he had thrown a cigarette out the window that landed, that came back in and landed in the back seat. There's like, it was vinyl seats. And there was only like this much of the cigarette left. So honestly, that cigarette would have just like, okay, it would have melted the seat, sure, and then it would have just gone out. Like, it would not have caught the entire fucking car on fire. Yeah. Which is what happened later on. And then... As he's almost killing them because he doesn't just put on the brakes or something like that, he um, goes off an exit. Well, then he turns around and comes the same direction onto the same exit, so he's on the wrong side of the highway. Yeah, wrong side of the highway. What grown-ass man would not know that he is on the wrong side of the highway? Even with no cars around, you know you're traveling on the right side of the highway. Yeah. And even people are alerting him, you're going the wrong way! Now Steve Martin wakes up at this point, because he had been asleep, and he doesn't even notice they're wrong. They're, so two grown-ass men don't realize they're traveling the wrong direction on the highway until somebody tries to, until literally the car on the opposite side of the fucking median of the highway is like, you're going the wrong way, and they're just like, what are you talking about? You don't know where we're going. And I'm like, what? So that was when I was really like, all right, now you're pushing it. Yeah. All right, movie, you're pushing it. Well, then we mentioned the part about them getting robbed, and then they, they, oh, but back to another part that this was earlier in the movie when they got robbed. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they thought they. Uh, of course, one thing about it is interesting because they, the guy just breaks into their apartment, breaks into the hotel room, steals their stuff, and then they end up getting in this whole trouble. And that's the reason why this ends up because Steve Martin's character ends up having his card taken by Dale because the car just switched off because it, when they're going into the hotel the first time when they meet up, the car just switched off. And I say, Crystal, take a look at the credit cards. Take a look at the credit cards. And Crystal didn't, Crystal couldn't at that point. And they look exactly the same. They were exactly the same credit cards. But if you look at the name and number, you can tell who, which who's his whose card. Well, I think it's like, the, like would you not... If I had, if I was paying for a room next to my friend who had the exact same credit card, don't don't you think you'd like look at it and make sure that your name was on it? Yes, yes, and of course they don't do that, and the cards are switched off, and so Steve Martin's car is taken, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that the car that Dale Griffin got with that with with his credit card was Steve Martin's car. I was pretty sure because that car was taken from that from that from that parking space. Is that what they were implying? I'm guessing. I, I I've been I watched the movie so many times and now I've gotten to figure out Dale took Steve Martin's car 
and he took the car that he was supposed to have. He gets to the parking space. No car is there. He gets pissed off. The bus driver drives off. He has to walk all the way back to the to the. And then this scene is just like, I get to there and I don't have a car. All I want is an effing car. Yeah, I love that scene. Now he's like, he's he's cursing at this woman. He's not yelling. He's just saying f every now and then. And she'd be like, she's like, sir, you really need to like control your language, please. I don't appreciate your tone. And he's like. Well, I don't fucking appreciate a fucking company who fucking promises me a car and fucking sends me to a space where there is no fucking car and I have to fucking walk to the... And it's just all this, all this. I like that. That was pretty funny. That, have you ever experienced that situation where that... Unruly... I don't know that bad. That's pretty bad, the situation. Now, I've, heard, I've heard people had worse where the oh, yeah. people have just ripped in people at the airline. And just to say that, yeah, I've, I've heard a comedian, a comedian say it was actually Aziz Ansari said like, um, oh, I think it was him. Anyway, some comedian said something about hating the customer service at uh, uh, U.S. Airlines or American Atlantic Airlines. Hate this when I'm sorry, folks. I'm, gonna fall I'm sorry to interrupt you, Aziz. But I'm sorry, folks, if it's windy. If you can hear us, we're trying to talk as loud as we can, and we, me and Crystal, kind of both had a hangover, and we kind of at the last. Yeah, I'm all hungover. Like I, I'm done talking about this movie. <laughs> I am actually done. That's all I have to say about it. But you know, I have to if say. I'm gonna sum it up. It was okay. Planes, trains, and automobiles. It's a good movie. It's good, okay. Good Thanksgiving movie. I have to say it's, it's all right. <laughs> so folks, this is me and this is me and Crystal, and this is our old movie. We review it. We got nothing better to do. Nothing better to do. Drinks.